God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. He said he was going to have to make an adjustment on it. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to wake you up. By the way, I'm not a visiting pastor. <laughs> I, I know I feel that way. Um, it was good to be down in uh, Gainesville last week, but it's even better to be home. Uh, so good to be here and again to be able to deliver God's gifts, uh, the gift of his word, the gift of the sacrament, uh, the gift of his people, uh, as we gather today. Uh, today's the first. This is the first time the two of us <laughs> have done this together. So uh, we're, we're praying for a lot of grace today. Uh, we're, we're going to deliver the grace, but have grace on us because we're figuring this thing out. various aspects of it. Uh, by the way, does anybody know what that is? Besides music. Okay, <laughs> Luann, what is it? It's a box and I and D. <laughs> yeah, I knew that. That's what I guess. <laughs> again, again, it plays with the message this day. Tim will be assisting with the common cup today. Uh, so 
hide the common cup. I mean, hide the, hide the individual cup. Some of you have a habit of folding your hands, and I can't tell if you've had the individual cup or not. Please, if you can, hold it up so he can tell, because he's, he's just learning who takes the common cup in these moments. Also, if you saw the email that uh, Victor Tim sent out, it would be a great thing for you to wear your name tags so that he can learn your names as quick as possible. Otherwise, you'll all be bug and sissy <laughs> while he's here. Uh, so that will be of great assistance. And also, if you did not receive the uh, email, uh, Mel Brasher passed away early Tuesday morning. And so, right there. Uh, he, he was very faithful, uh, very faithful until the end. And, and again, what a profession of faith uh, that he lived, but he also spoke. Uh, and, and again, we celebrate that he's in the arms of Jesus in this moment. Uh, so now as we gather together as God's people, uh, we take some time for prayerful meditation. <laughs> Let the Holy Spirit guide your prayer. Uh, use a hymn verse. Uh, meditate on a scripture passage. Uh, but as we do that, as the Spirit prepares our hearts and minds for worship this day, we do so as the candles are being lit and the prayer is being prayed.
O Lord, who can stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness, and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, in holy baptism, you declared us to be your children, and gathered us into your one holy church in which you daily and richly forgive us our sins and grant us new life through your Spirit. Be in our midst, enliven our faith, and graciously receive our prayer and praise. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.
outside a wall built with a plumb line, with a plumb line in his hand. And the Lord said to me, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a plumb line. Then the Lord said, Behold, I am setting a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. I will never again pass by them. The high places of Isaac shall be made desolate, and the sanctuaries of Israel shall be laid waste. And I will rise against the house of Jeroboam with the sword. Then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, said to Jeroboam, king of Israel, saying, Amos has conspired against you in the midst of the house of Israel. The land is not able to bear all his words. For thus Amos has said, Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel must go into exile away from his land. And Amaziah said to Moses, O seer, go, flee away to the land of Judah, and eat bread there, and prophesy there, but never again prophesy at Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary, and it is a temple of the kingdom. Then Amos answered and said to Amaziah, I was no prophet nor a prophet's son, but I was a herdsman and a dresser of sycamore figs. But the Lord took me from following the flock, and the Lord said to me, Go, prophesy to my people Israel. The epistle is from Ephesians chapter 1. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love he predestined us for adoption through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace, which, with which he has blessed us in the Beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of his will, according to his purpose, which he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to unite all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In him we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him, who works all things according to the counsel of his will, so that we, who were the first to hope in Christ, might be to the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the promise Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it, to the praise of his glory. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
because he had married her. For John had been saying to Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to put him to death, but she could not. For Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he kept him safe. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he heard him gladly. But an opportunity came when Herod, on his birthday, gave a banquet for his nobles and military commanders and the leading men of Galilee. For when Herodias' daughter came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests. And the king said to the girl, Ask me for whatever you wish, and I will give it to you. And he vowed to her, Whatever you ask, I will give you up to half of my kingdom. And she went out and said to her mother, For what should I ask? And she said, The head of John the Baptist. When she came in immediately with haste to the king and asked, saying, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. And the king was exceedingly sorry. But because of his oaths and his guests, he did not want to break his word to her. And immediately the king sent an executioner with orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in the prison and brought his head on a platter and gave it to the girl. And the girl gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard of it, they came and took his body and laid it in the tomb. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Congregation may be seated. Grace, peace, and mercy from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Our Creator God is deeply intentional. And as I frame it this morning, as I connect it to the picture that is on the bulletin cover, our Creator God has written the words and the music of creation and of human life. Just imagine him putting, putting pen to paper and, and scribing in the notes, but also all the lyrics as he writes this, these words and music of creation, but also of our human life. He also has been crafting preaching and liturgy of the word. From the moment he spoke everything into creation, that was the beginning where he crafted preaching and liturgy. And then he went through the prophets, and then he went through the scripture writers, and then he comes through us today. But he's also the creator God who creates the act of blessing in Christ that we hear in this text. 
by looking at the singular word of salvation, damnation, what we end up doing is we forget the strength and the harmony of the chords that God has written through the hand of Paul in this text. And sometimes we want to forget it. Sometimes we want to dumb it down. Sometimes, sometimes we don't want to hear that word and look at that word predestination. Instead, we look at just salvation and we look at those things as what makes me a good Christian? And for some, it's let's just attend. Let's just attend worship. We come weekly. We come twice a month. Maybe we come monthly. But if we're just if that's all we do, if that's all we need to do, if it's enough to just attend, and maybe it's not even coming to church, maybe it's just attending to our spiritual matters, making sure we do a proper devotion every morning, say our prayers, eat our vitamins, whatever. We feel that that is enough to take care of who we are and make us a good Christian. But there are some who instead use their good works to lift themselves up. Look at what I've done. And they use their good works as sort of their, their chain around their gold medal around their neck. Maybe even a silver medal or a bronze. At least you medal. <laughs> and so we use the good works to sort of identify ourselves as better than another. And we see no need to share each other's gifts and presents gathering together with one another. And that's where you get those people who are in choirs that they can be very pitchy. Yes, Luanna, I'll look at you, because I knew you were going to laugh at that one. Luanne knows, if you've ever been in a choir, somebody, somebody who is pitchy, if you watch, have watched American Idol, every once in a while you'll get that one, who's pitchy. <laughs> they're not quite on, they're sort of off-tune. They're out of pitch. And this kind of Christian, this kind that wants to hold themselves as, as an example of what it means to be through their good works or through their attendance, they're at odds with what should be shared. They're at odds with what should be heard. For they get enamored with their own <coughs> one single word of salvation. And as long as I've made it, that's all that really matters. But what happens in that moment is they lose sight of the greater work. They lose sight of the greater masterpiece that has been written by our Heavenly Father. Because in these verses here, this is God's composition. Yes, we know it came from the hand of Paul, but this is God's composition that he's written down with the lyrics and the notes that form this beautiful song for us to hear, for the whole world to hear. That it's not up to what you do. It's not up to how much you attend. 
chosen by the Father. You and I have been chosen by the Father. Not because of anything that we have done, but because of what the Father has done for us. You, we have been chosen by the Father. You and I have been redeemed in Christ. That's what happened at the waters of our baptism. Because there we were chosen by the Father. There we were, we, we were redeemed in Christ. And there we were sealed through the power of the Holy Spirit. And it was according to the purpose of that triune God who accomplishes what he desires to draw us back into relationship with him as we have been repositioned in Christ in his death and his resurrection. That's what predestination is. Notice in this text, go back today and read this text, how many instances of in Christ or in him there is. Or there are. There are. It's all over these verses. Because we are predestined to lives embedded in the resurrected Jesus Christ himself. The pronouncement of God's blessedness has been poured out upon us through the waters of baptism, through confession and absolution, today through the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that the pronouncement of God's blessedness is given to us and poured out upon us, and it will result in the praise of God himself. To where he will lead us to discover the place we occupy in his plan for salvation, not only for ourselves, but for the whole world. Because it points to Jesus Christ. And so you and I live in a new realized space where the kingdom already resonates and is manifest. It's a rhythm that reveals God's mysterious, yet encompassing, saving purposes in Christ. And in Christ, you and I are reconciled to the Father. In Christ, you and I are restored in relationship with the Father. And in Christ, you and I are renewed do those things that the Father desires for us to do for the sake of his kingdom. For now. In any event, in any case, and into all eternity. God has written a great harmonious you and I are singular notes that play out for his kingdom. And that harmony gets crafted in the guarantee of the Holy Spirit that was poured into us at our baptism. And it's done so that the Father can be glorified in our presence, but also as people Watch us and see us what we do. Good choice. Because this comes in the next chapter. By grace are you saved through faith. This is not your own doing. It is a gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. But what so often, that's verses 8 and 9, what so often gets missed is verse 10. That you and I have been created as God's workmanship. And that the word there in Greek can be translated masterpiece. You and I have been created as God's <laughs> masterpiece. For the good works that he predestined for us to do before the foundation of the world. Because there's no 
I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us
Your faithfulness continues throughout all generations. Amen. Congregation, be seated. Peace.